I've been practicing neurosurgery in Tucson, Arizona since 1992. I'm an active neurosurgeon with the Carondelet Neurological Institute that's part of St. Joe's Hospital here in Tucson. In my daily practice, I'm seeing a growing population of ever younger cancer patients that in my clinical judgment, more likely than not, have been caused by cell phone use. In, in, in our clinical practice, we don't have the luxury of telling people um, in terms of advising them about radio frequency radiation. We don't have the luxury of being able to tell them, well, let's just wait five years and we'll tell you about the study. We really have to practice on the precautionary principle of ways that we can prevent disease. That segues into the American Cancer Society published data that came out in the journal Cancer. It's a very well-known cancer journal that clinicians actively read on a regular basis, just like the JAMA. And they published in 2016 that brain cancer was the leading cause of death in men under age 40. And I'm seeing this phenomena on a regular basis. I'm seeing it as young as, as 28, 35, with grade four glioblastoma patients that are presenting to the, my emergency room with new onset seizures for the first time. And, and already these are devastating tumors. And yes, it may be anecdotal, but you go to interview and a lot of these are on the right side of the brain um, where most of the people use cell phones, but they can even occur on the left side of the brain. But it's still more likely than not related. The other piece I wanted to emphasize is that I'm on a continuing quest to maintain my education in neurosurgery and remain active. I've been doing this since 1992 in clinical practice and I go to national international meetings with leading skull based surgeons, tumor surgeons the world over that are so gifted that they can resect tumors at the base of the skull with a range of approaches and now even minimally invasive techniques that are done through keyholes through the nose or through the base of the skull. But the sad piece of a lot of these presentations is, is that if they followed the patients long enough, literally in two to five years, we're seeing recurrences of these tumors with gifted neurosurgeons that are doing their best. I've read enough of the science, seen enough of the published data that when people walk into my office and I see their cell phones on their body next to the head, talking, taking messages, and I even have signs in my office that request, please turn off your cell phone. <laughs> a lot of my older people don't know how to even use their phones. But I know enough from my clinical experience that cell phone radiation is harmful, and my advice to them is keep the phone off the body at all times. The most recent study from Yale University, also sponsored by the American Cancer Society, identified a fairly common genetic alteration that increases the risk of developing thyroid cancer that was in response to cell phone use. So there's a direct correlation. The phone is next to the neck, it's next to the head. Salivary gland tumors have also been reported in clinical studies. So at the end of the day, there may be variations in, in how disease manifests. And we know enough that internationally, people are, told, people are told in France, Switzerland, and Israel by medical authorities to keep cell phones off their body. Keeping wireless devices, especially away from children, off your body and away from your head is a very good maxim. And so my opinion is, is that it's just common sense that we practice this precautionary principle.